Uh, my girlfriend had a hot take on the Paralympics the other night. Oh, uh, she hates it. Say. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, no. I lost God. him. He now looks he, very happy, he, he was getting boring, so we cut him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Is this Look happening to you guys, too? Oh, it, it's an orgasm face. Oh, yeah, we've seen him. <laughs> uh, oh, he's back. Famous. Because I can nope. hear all of you the entire time. That I'm <laughs> oh, I think we found our intro for today's episode. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> In DC, we're just hoping that you listen. Oof. Welcome to District Divided. I am your lead host for the week, Spencer Brudig, and I am tired. It has been a long two days. Flooding is coming. My floors are ruined. I've been on and off the phone with insurance companies. But besides that, we're here to talk sports and cool stuff. I am Spencer Brudig. I'm here with Amit Singh, Kadeen Wiggins, a.k.a. K-Dot, Latero Cabrera, a.k.a. The Man Amongst Men. I didn't have an actual uh, nickname for him, so I just thought, I'm trying to just fire myself up. I am exhausted <laughs> in between yawns. Gentlemen, how are you all? K-Dot, you have been running around all day. Tell us about your morning and afternoon. I'm running around all day and wearing black to mourn all the cuts that have come on cut day in the NFL. Um, but beyond that, it, fairly good. I mean, I still have a job, so I'm, I'm excited about that. And I am wearing black as well to uh, commemorate uh, all of the bad jokes that we are all going to make over the course of this episode. Elsie, you're wearing black, and um, I noticed you are wearing black as well. Any potential, you know, particular reason why? Well, my only Olympic shirt is black, so I don't really have a choice i just i just got the email and figured i'd throw it on i didn't have any other particular reason for it you are repping you are repping the the usa it's fantastic (laughs) you all look great everyone's beards looking fantastic except for lc who's the only clean shaven person i shave smooth yeah although there wasn't much to do but i shaved (laughs) not too much you shaved three weeks ago lc very good (laughs) Uh, Amit, I am done with our introduction. Please take it away because I've got <laughs> nothing else to say. Thank you, Spencer Brudig. <laughs> Once again, that is Spencer Brudig, ladies and gentlemen. That was an awesome intro. I definitely got to step my game up moving forward. <laughs> but what we're talking about in this episode, we're DC Sports Podcast, District Divided. We're talking about the Washington football team. As KDOT had mentioned, cuts were made today. So we're going to talk about who made it. And what we're excited about, and then just, you know, some of the bummers. You know, we did lose out on a couple key players I can think of off the top of my head. We'll talk about that. Then we throw it over to LC to talk to us about the Paralympics. He's giving us an update from there. Well, he's here in D.C., but they're in Tokyo. Uh, So he's going to talk about that. And then Cristiano Ronaldo went back to Manchester United. So in light of that, we are going to go around and give you, in our No Hate Debate, the greatest return to a team, to a sport, whatever you want. Just greatest return. And then we conclude with the State of the Union, your DC Sports wraparound coverage segment. Maybe we'll put Spencer on the spot one more time for that. But we will begin with the Washington football team. KDOT, cuts were made. How are you feeling? Do you like the roster? Any surprises for you? The floor is yours. All the above and failing every which emotion, right? So, like... I know that we, we had talked on the previous episode about uh, certain positions and how it is that it was going to shake out. Some of these are a little surprising. Other ones are not so much, right? So, like, in, once again, these are all – as we're recording this, it's right before 5 o'clock on cut day. Um, there's still news. So, it's like it, there's the official list, non-official list. Like, we're still trying to figure out exactly how everything's shaking out. Um, but off the bat, nobody was surprised that a few of these guys are left, like Steven Montez – Maybe he gets on the practice squad again. Maybe he doesn't. I don't think anybody really cares all that much. We got our three guys as far as quarterback. Running backs, a um, little surprise, but not so much. But we, we're down to three. Antonio Gibson, J.D. McKissick, and Jared Patterson. I remember we talked about Jared Patterson getting more play in the first second preseason games. Um, and it kind of looked like he was going to take that Peyton Barber role. And it's not anybody's real surprise. The more that they were playing Patterson over time, that Barber was probably going to get out. Um, wide receivers... This is probably where I was hurt the most. I know that I had made the request last week that I was really hoping Antonio Gandy Golden made the team, and sadly, he did not. Um, there are the guys that we knew were going to make it, Terry, Curtis, De'Ami Brown, Adam Humphreys, Cam Sims, DeAndre Carter, Dax Milne. Um, DeAndre Carter, Max Milne, 
Maybe we're looking at as far as guys that are really going to contribute on special teams. We know that they're going to be returning some kicks, things like that. So it kind of makes sense. It was just a really, really stacked room. You knew that you were going to be unhappy with at least one or two of these guys that were not going to make it, right? So, like, they, but it is what it is. I mean, Steven Sibbs, we knew he, he'd gone. I think he's in Buffalo. They picked him up right now. Um, so at least a lot of these guys are going to be able to hopefully get an opportunity elsewhere. And at least, you know, in Washington, unlike a lot of other years, some of these guys that are gone. We're like, it kind of hurts because we know they got talent. It's not really always been the case as much as it's someone we just fell in love with over preseason for a little bit of time. So hopefully a lot of these guys get picked out. Um, our biggest news on this podcast is that our guy is in. Samish Reyes is officially, well, unofficially, on the 53-man roster. Bit surprising they went and rolled with four tight ends. I know we were talking on the pod about maybe you do three. You do the John Bates, uh, and then you uh, – John Bates, Logan Thomas, and then you kind of choose between the Ricky Steele Jones or the Samish Reyes. Both made the team, it looks as though. Um, defensive line, nothing too crazy as far as that goes. It's, he's getting, he's getting out because he's bored. It's boring. Defense. Probably oh, where boy. you're going to see most people. I don't understand how, for the first time ever, my internet's fucking up on this goddamn thing. <laughs> Am I back? You are back. You're back, back. and better than ever. Here's Talk about our sucks. elite defense. I can hear you guys making fun of me when I can't say anything. That's the only really shitty part about this internet being unstable crap is I say, oh, he's making his O face. Like, I heard all of the shit, okay? Like, so not- what I hear is the downloading is fine. It's the uploading. Okay. It looks then like thank it, you. <laughs> DC Xfinity bullshit. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully they don't want to be a sponsor. I'm sorry, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> linebackers are down to four. Jamie Davis, Cole Holcomb, John Bostic, Kalik Hudson. That seems for this defense to be a very, very short supply of linebackers. So I expect some sort of movement happening there. So that's why I'm saying this 53-man roster is very unofficial because I expect it to change within the next week. I don't think you're going to roll in to this season running a 4-3 defense and you only got one guy that's going to come off the bench as far as linebackers go. No, it's not going to happen. There's going to be some more movement that happens there. I've been hearing a rumor that maybe look as far as a trade that might happen at linebacker. Not entirely sure. Haven't heard anything other than look for something to really happen at that position. Cornerback, Kendall Fuller, William Jackson, Benjamin St. Juice, who has been a lightning rod throughout this um, throughout the pre- training camp? Look like he's the guy that's going to be able to come and contribute immediately. Tory McTire, yeah, I know, I don't know him either. Darrell Roberts, I don't know that guy either. Um, Troy Apke, that's the one that was probably making the most waves on Twitter, especially when you consider some of the guys that got lost. Danny Johnson gone. Jimmy Moreland very surprisingly gone. Jimmy Moreland was ranked, I think, number three in PFF as far as slot corners for a period of time last year. So. That, that, to me, was a big surprise seeing Jimmy Moreland go. Troy Apke, we all knew he had the speed. He didn't really do a great job at safety. Maybe they're seeing something from him that we aren't seeing. Because even during the preseason games, I haven't seen anything that blew me away. Maybe he'll be a guy that just has these on special teams. I don't know, really. It's a little weird that Troy Apke's still there. But maybe uh, the speed counts or something there. They just see something that's happening that we don't. But I will say this. Regardless of whatever it is that's happened, especially on the defensive side, you kind of kind of think that, I mean, I trust Ron Rivera and Jack Del Rio, right? Like I trust them as far as talent evaluators. I trust them as far as making sure they're going to put the best defense out. It doesn't feel like anything was political. It doesn't feel like a Jay Gruden, Bruce Allen sort of situation. So it just, everybody needs to take the time to realize it's cut time. It's sad. Some of these guys have become your favorites. You might jerseys. Not everyone can make the roster. You can hope that some of these guys get picked up somewhere else. Or maybe if they haven't, and there's some injuries that happen to watch because injuries happen every year, some guys that we can bring back. Yeah, and so just to quickly follow up, Troy Apke, he made it because of special teams. I think that's been pretty widely reported at this point uh, because the other guys like Jeremy Reeves, Jimmy Moreland, seem to be better in coverage uh, in that Reeves, secondary. Yep. Yeah, you know, but mm-hmm. they did not make it for that reason. Special teams very important. Coaching staff highlighted that. Linebacker, here's a question for you. So we are a Samis Reyes podcast. Congratulations to you, sir. First Chilean in the NFL the moment he takes a regular season snap. I think that's super cool and his potential's through the roof. But again, four tight ends that I don't think was something we were expecting. When we talk about linebackers, only those four names. K-Dot, I'm curious, 
Landon Collins may be moving in to that linebacking position at times, or, and this is the one I think is a bit more likely, Samis Reyes actually gets put on IR, potentially, so that you can make space for a linebacker and you protect him from being picked up by trying to put him on the practice squad. What are your thoughts there? Do you think we get creative like that? Or do you think we don't put him on IR because that means Samis Reyes cannot practice? Again, I really want this guy to succeed, but I'm curious about the linebackers because only four, that's crazy. It is crazy. I don't know if you can get too cute as far as the Samish Reyes thing because, I mean, you want him to get reps. That's the only way he's going to get better, right? Is that we've seen that, like, he's been, he's been studying football ever since he decided he wasn't going to play basketball anymore. So he's got enough as far as the mental reps and doing that. He needs to be around other football players getting some sort of speed going, which is that's the hardest thing as far as the adjustment to the NFL, right, is the speed. And even when you're looking at practice, it's still not anywhere near the game speed, but it gets you in that mind frame. Have Samish Reyes just sitting there doing nothing, maybe it saves him for next training camp or shows him if there's a tight end that gets hurt and he gets full, he gets brought back in. But I think what you're doing with Samish Reyes is you're basically saying this dude's probably going to get some playing time at some point. I, I still find it hard to believe that they're going to carry four tight ends, especially with the four linebackers. I, I thought you were going to say they're just going to line them up on defense, which I, I think that'd be a problem. Um, that dude could hit, though. He probably can, but I just I don't want to see him lost in the sauce out there. Right, right. <laughs> on defense. It's one thing a tight end. Defense, that could be – that could get ugly real, real quick. Um I think the Landon Collins thing, that was something that was rumored that he was going to be switching positions. And then there was the hard, absolutely not, that came from the organization that came from Landon Collins afterwards. But if you see Landon Collins and the way they do a lot of things with the strong safety, he's going to be playing around the box a lot. So, um, I, but even if he does, that does not take the place of another linebacker completely. I, there is no way that I see this team rolling into the season with four linebackers active. I just don't see it. Yeah, no, I think it's, but fair credit to the coaching staff, not just choosing to keep linebackers for the sake of the numbers. They'd rather go for quality over quantity, clearly, by doing that. So fair play to them. And again, like you had said, KDOT, it's a tough day. A lot of people got cut. A lot of people that have been working their whole lives for this, you know? Maybe they'll find another team like Steven Sims, who actually did get cut by the Buffalo Bills today. It's hard. It, it, yep. It's definitely hard out there for those guys. Um, and we were joking about wearing black for that reason, but it is difficult. And we do hope that our guys succeed at the very least. I want to see, you know, Jimmy Moreland go somewhere. I want to see Jeremy Reeves go somewhere. Do not go to the NFC East. I think that's not allowed. Um, as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> please go to the AFC if possible. But uh, we're wishing all the best to those who were. Uh, it as is, well. it is the saddest day of the football year, in my opinion. Like there is a, the universal status day. A lot of people got a black Monday. I actually kind of enjoy Black Monday sometimes because some of these coaches deserve to get fired. Some of them fucking deserve it. <laughs> right? But there's nobody rooting against – I mean, hard knocks. That's always around the season finale. Like, everybody you, – you feel for these guys. Some of these dudes, their dreams ended today. They, they, it ended today. And a lot of these guys are going to still keep trying and clawing. And that's why I think it's important for these leagues like the XFL to hopefully exist going forward so that they can find a place to land. Yeah. Totally fair. Now, one question, and this is at the risk of maybe helping out, KDOT. We're in a fantasy league together, and uh, I got to ask about Antonio Gibson's fantasy value now that Peyton Barber's gone, because he would vulture some touchdowns at the goal line. Do you think Antonio Gibson's fantasy football value has increased at all? All right, so here's what you just did. You introed it in saying that me and you are in a fantasy league together, right? which means as far as any fancy advice, fuck all. But if we're talking <laughs> about the, the podcast, or, so is this for a podcast? Do I have my podcast hat on? Or my you have your fancy podcast football hat <sighs> Antonio Gibson should be a really good pick in fantasy this year. I think that if we're looking at – J.D. McKissick is going to vulture a lot of those receptions, and I think we still haven't seen exactly where they're going to line up Curtis Samuel. So there are two things that kind of be a little – worried about to a certain degree with Antonio Gibson, plus the health aspect of things. He's never truly like completely healthy. Um, am I looking at him as probably like a running, a low end running back too? Maybe. I think, I, I think to me, he's right. No, you know what? I'd say running back too. You could have him at running back too and be okay. Knowing as long as you got a good third guy, he's not going to be the dude who's going to put up monster numbers every year. I still think if you're looking at Antonio Gibson sniffing around a thousand yards, um, in, in, in rushing, especially if they're giving a lot of carries to Jared Patterson, which it looks like they're going to do. Um, 
I think you're happy with it. I think you'll have a high enough average. I just don't think they're going to, he's not going to be that bell cow. Okay. No, I, th- I think that's a totally fair assessment. Spencer, Elsie, any thoughts on the Washington football team before we move on to the Paralympics? So looking at this 53 man roster for people that actually know the NFC East, where are we putting the Washington football team in the division and what is their final record going to be? Oh, let's get those season predictions in now. K dot, you want to go first? Yeah. Uh, so how many games are there now? 17? 17. So I, I think we're a 10 win team. Um, in this division. I, I put it right around there. I think the defense is going to do it. I really do know that our offense is going to have moments where they struggle. It's just going to happen. Brian Fitzpatrick is going to turn the ball over at times. Um, they're going to have uh, uh, um, they're going to have moments where they're not going to be able to run as easily as we want them to. Um, the offense is still the Achilles heel overall of this team. But with that defense, we can be in any conversation. It's all going to be about whether or not Ryan Fitzpatrick takes care of the football and gives us these opportunities. Um, I, I say 10 wins, and I think that that's even a little aggressive. Um, but I, I, I think it's an improvement over last year. Yeah, I'm going to go 9-8, and eight, uh, but it's still enough to win the division because it's bad. So Dallas, I think, would have the second highest total. They'll probably be at 8, is my guess, because their defense still is bad. They've tried to address it, but it's still going to take some time. The Giants are a mess. It's hilarious. I mean, Cam Newton got cut today. They should strongly look at him. Because Daniel Jones is a train wreck of a first-round pick. So they're going nowhere so long as he's there. The Eagles, you know, they tried trading for Deshaun Watson. I don't know if you saw that, KDOT. And he uh, exercised his no-trade clause saying, I'm not going to Philadelphia. So, you know, humanitarian stuff aside, that's hilarious. Um, And I think just him not wanting to go to Philadelphia speaks to the fan base of just terrible people as well as just the roster being pretty bad as well. It, Jalen Hurts needs to be really, really good. So I'd say first or second leaning towards first, because I do think we probably have the most talented roster in the NFC East. And with that, Spencer, did you have a prediction Encouraging. without knowing about this roster? We'll go. They're going to be 500. They can't be. They'll be yeah, they nine, nine, eight. Okay. Nine, eight. No, no, you should you should predict eight, eight, that one? they will actually tie. Yeah, eight, eight, one. I will predict they will actually tie a game so they can go 500. Exactly. There's been more ties, right? More recently, yeah. 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 Uh, like a, do, does like anybody, a six, six. <laughs> anybody look at Cam Newton or are you all set? No, I, I mean, not, not for the Washington football team. No. I wanted us to, but not after Fitzpatrick came into town. Right. Yeah, that's where I stand. Now, it would be cool if he went to Atlanta. He's from Atlanta. He's 32 years old. Matt Ryan looks washed. I think that would be pretty cool if he waited one year and then got to quarterback the Falcons. Carolina fans would lose their minds. Same division. (laughs) A return to Carolina. (laughs) I think the Cam Newton thing is uh, – I haven't heard anything complete on what happened there at the end. And I think that there are a lot of questions that I have as far as what happened at the end. There was a story about, like, I'm hearing he's unvaccinated, and that might have played a factor. At least it didn't help. I also heard, I mean, Mac Jones beat him out and there got to be a certain element of Cam Newton. It's like, I'm not sitting here to backing up anybody. And with Mac Jones, you don't we apologize for the technical like him sitting in the wings. You were listening over to your District shoulder, If you're going to start him. So I, I don't know what situ- God damn it. I don't know what. <laughs> I don't know that it's just like, it ended, ends up like, merging the two like the happy talk and the, like, look at look at his fun face now that's so fun <laughs> just frozen this podcast is brought to you by no. <laughs> brought to you it's by a commercial break Kadeen it's Wiggins. a fourth commercial break. are you back, you back? Kadeen, you back? <laughs> we can kind of see you now buddy now you're there now you're not Xfinity. I, once again i can hear you guys throughout all this shit making fun of me i don't know if you can hear me um now we can I'm just going to shut the fuck up until uh, no hate debate. So, (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, I just want to give my quick camp spiel. I think it had to happen. Uh, Thinking more about it. Initially, I thought it was like, whoa, that's crazy. And the more you think about it, if Mac Jones was their starter and they decided rookie quarterback out of Alabama, if that was the decision they made, it makes a lot of sense not to have Cam Newton there. Because if he gets off to a rough start, people are going to talk about Cam Newton. For those in the locker room that like Cam, and maybe don't like Mac or disagree with the decision, there could be problems there. So I think they needed to get him out. COVID stuff aside, I think it made sense 
to remove Cam Newton from that locker room if he's not going to be your starter. It's unfortunate because I think he's incredibly talented, but he has looked a bit rusty at times. I hope his shoulder's okay. Sometimes he just sort of throws one in the dirt, and I'm like, what the heck just happened? This is a former MVP we're talking about. So I do think he'll end up landing somewhere, but I think it's going to be a bit of time. I don't think it's going to be the next few days. I think it's going to be the next few weeks, maybe even months, but he will land somewhere. He's too talented not to. That's the thought there. Um, but let's move on to the Paralympics, which are happening in Tokyo right now. And LC last episode right. gave us a preview of the Paralympics, as well as a number of DMV athletes that are there. LC, take it away. How are we doing? Yeah, so the U.S. in general is doing well. I mean, obviously, there's uh, there's less, there's fewer countries that are really competitive at the at the highest level. Um, I think in in the Paralympics, but um, I'm going to focus mostly on the uh, on the DMV athletes. A few of them that we talked about in the last episode, um, and I think it's it's appropriate to start with the legend with Jessica Long, who won every color already uh in in this paralympics and she still has uh, i think at least one more um event to go but she got gold in the 200 uh meter medley and that is the fourth consecutive gold that she was four consecutive olympics winning that event so absolute legend status um she also got silver at the 400 meter freestyle which i actually saw a little bit of the uh post uh interview and she was like my like my goal for this was to be on the podium. So silver is pretty freaking good for trying to be in the podium. Um, and she also got bronze uh, in a hundred meter backstroke. So she got all three colors. She still has the hundred meter uh, backstroke breaststroke to go, which I believe will happen tonight at the, at the time of this recording, um, which would be like tomorrow in Japan. I don't know how time works, whatever it's, it's this week. Um, so she's up to 26 medals uh, now. So absolutely just insane and not one of those athletes that just won in a lifetime so uh props to her continuing to to dominate uh we also talked a little bit about trevon jennifer uh who's a player in the basketball men's basketball wheelchair team which if you haven't seen it's actually a really interesting really dynamic play um and the us is like a, a good team but not necessarily the best team like it's not as dominant as as in uh basketball in the Olympics, but they did uh, win a very narrowly, a good win against Germany to start the Paralympics. And then they also beat Iran um, and then dominated Algeria and Australia. However, they did lose by one point against Great Britain, who is one of those candidates. Great Britain is one of the best teams in, in wheelchair basketball, but that's, that's uh, the good news is that they are in the quarterfinals. So the U S will play in the quarterfinals. Obviously at this point, it's a tournament style. So you, when you go on, you lose your out. So we'll be looking uh, forward to, to that. Uh, we also have Daniel Romanchuk from, uh, from here from the DMV who won gold at the 400 meter uh, in track and field. And he also finished fifth in the 1500 meter. Um, he, I was looking at some of the profiles on the Paralympic website, which have a lot of information about the athletes. And they also have like a line about ambition, like sort of their goals for the Olympics, which is really interesting. Um, Daniel has said, I'd like to win a medal. He got gold. So I would say mission accomplished, uh, well done. And, and, you know, obviously looking forward to, to grow and, and continue winning there. We also have um, Sydney Barta, who is somebody that we talked about last episode. Uh, she's a high schooler. So obviously very young athlete already at the highest level competing with these, uh, with these, uh, you know, players, uh, athletes from all over the world. And she finished fourth in the women's 200 meters. So just short of a medal, but again, at such a young age, so much room to grow. I would expect for her to just continue um, to to dominate and to play at the at the top to race at the top level, um, and maybe in the next Olympics we'll we'll see her uh, in the podium. We also have Lauren Sapp uh, who finished uh, fifth in the hundred meter butterfly as swimming. Um, still in competition for two hundred meter medley and hundred meter backstroke, so he still has a few uh, opportunities. Um, and also a really interesting story with uh, Zachary Shatuk, who finished eighth in the finals. But he actually beat the American record for that event, which is a 200 meter, meter individual medley for his category. Um, there are different uh, categories depending on the impairments that different athletes have. So that's why you hear me say like multiple people, you know, uh, swam in the 200s or, or, or had the track and field events, because depending on the impairments they have, they run in different categories or they, they race in different categories, swimming and all that. So um, that's sort of the, the, all the, the updates that I have for, for local um athletes in the dmv we still have a few things to to go track and field goes 
pretty much, I think the whole Olympics, there's still more swimming to go. Um, and obviously we have, we are entering the final stages of the, um, of the basketball, which, which is really interesting. I also got to see a little bit of wheelchair rugby, which I don't know if any of you yeah, got to see any it of is it. Super cool. It so, is incredible. I mean, it has a very little relationship to, to rugby. I would say like, it's so interesting that that was called wheelchair rugby. Um, but you know, if the listener doesn't know it's played in like a basketball court size, I would say. Right. Um, and they play with what looks like a volleyball right? Like it's, it looks soft. Like you can sort of grab onto it. Um, it's four V four, right? So they're in wheelchairs. And the goal is to like in rugby to get with the ball to the end zone, kind of like in football, actually American football. Um, and once you cross the, the, the plane, then you have scored. And it's like one of those games about turnovers, right? Like if you turn the ball over, it's sort of rare and like really bad. Um, and so most, most points or most plays end in, in points. So super interesting sport, like kind of a mix of other sports that we know, but at the same time, unlike anything else we've seen. So really interesting. I was curious if, if any of you have seen any of it, or if you've seen any other sports that you found really interesting. Yeah, I saw, so I saw the wheelchair rugby. I think it was the final. It was Great Britain in the U S um, yeah. and Great Britain ended up winning I, and near the end, first off, very cool. Um, but I think near the end, I noticed that, like, I think Great Britain was trying to waste some time. So they would wheel all the way until about the end yeah, zone. And then the they would almost be banged in. Like, the U.S. would sort of push them in to be like, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Put that ball down. We need to get going the other way. Because there's a shot clock. And so mm-hmm. the, the idea would be that once you're at the line, like, you're going to score, right? Like, it literally takes them. They just move for a millimeter and they're in. So they know they're going to score. And so if you burn the clock, then you're just giving the other team who's losing less time to, to come back. So yeah, that was, that was clearly a strategy. Yeah, no, I, I really enjoyed. So the only thing I have seen so far is wheelchair rugby. I've not seen archery. Now you had said last week, so that a couple, was it a couple of the contestants that would shoot with their feet? Is that right? Yeah. So I think there's a few, I know that one of the American ones um, does that. Um, for me, also the the event that I really want to watch, and I saw Argentina win one of the the first games, is the five on five uh, football uh, or soccer uh, here in, in the United States. So every player, uh, you know, has a visual impairment, and they still wear you know the the blackout. Uh, I don't know, they're called goggles or whatever they're called, like blindfolds, um, so that nobody can see, but the keepers can see. Um, and it's five v five soccer. The ball has a bell in it, so they can track it by sound, and it is insane like the the level of skill that these players have to both keep track and uh and manage the ball with their feet without obviously looking at it and then taking shots and just placing the shot it's just like you know they're they're scoring on keepers who can see um and have limited mobility but like it's absolutely amazing um and really entertaining to watch so i'm looking forward to to some of that that's upcoming right now in, in these next few weeks I will say too that um, Paralympic tennis is unbelievable. If you want to see something that. that's just scales perfectly, that there's nothing yeah. really that you have to know. It just, they get two bounces. Honestly, I feel like some of those elite um, Olympians could probably beat the vast majority of like, of uh, normally abled people because it's just, uh, I shouldn't say normally abled, but able body people because they, uh, they move so quickly and they hit so hard. It is really, really impressive to watch. So. Yeah. I'd highly recommend that as well. Now, one question I have, does anybody yeah. know if you have any disability, can you compete in the normal Olympics in a, in a sport that might not need that thing? So like, say that you're a dressage rider that's missing a leg. Can you ride in the normal Olympics or are you for sure pushed into the Paralympics? So from what I remember, that was the whole conversation around Oscar Pistorius um, because he had uh, like, he had two uh, missing uh, limbs, right? Like, uh, and so he had two prost- uh, prosthetics. And I'm pretty sure that th- there was like a whole International Olympic Committee, like, you know, conversation, debate, whatever you want to call it, because he wanted to participate. He wanted to run in the Olympics. And from what I remember, they, they let him participate. So I would say that um, if there may be some, I, I remember some of the discussion being around like, is it, is it an advantage actually to have the prosthetic? Like, can you make it so? Because it, it is like a technological piece, right? Like, it is sort of man made. And so the conversation was, wasn't on like, uh, the conversation was around is having a prosthetic a, an advantage because you can design it 
to be faster or to be better or to be whatever. But from what I remember, and we, we can Google Live production live right here. Um, we can we can figure out. But I'm pretty sure they let him participate in the in the Olympics. Not well, the, the first Olympics. thing that comes up is just his murder case, murder trial. That was the thing yes. I remember. Unrelated, <laughs> but yes. <laughs> I don't know if I'll be live enough to do this, but in uh, I think he did compete in 2004. In 2008, they ruled that he was a disadvantage. It was an advantage, and his there legs were banned. Okay, got it. Yeah, so so I would expect that to be it to be sort of like a case by case, because like what you said, Spencer, maybe in, in that case it wouldn't be an advantage, right? But I think in track and field, where like he's using the prosthetics to like run, um, maybe that's a different case. But I don't know. Yeah, that's that's a really good question. I'd never thought about that before. You fast forward to 2012. I'm sorry, my internet's like. Go for um, it. He he was allowed to compete at that point. So yeah, it just depends so. on the committee at different particular points in time, hmm. and it depends on what's happening as far as any legal suits or anything. It seems like it's there's not okay. a surefire answer across the board as far as the prosthetics go. They're just doing yeah. this for ratings or something like that. And it's like, oh, this time we'll let him, and like, oh shit, he's allowed this time, and like the last time it wasn't, and they just like enjoy the buzz or like what's the deal with that? I, I feel like once they make a ruling, that I'm sure. Just be- I mean, I'm sure there's turnover in the Olympic Committee, and like maybe the city that that organizes may have may have some more sense because the, the sports that are in each Olympic change, right? Like the um, we were we were talking about the Olympics, like the skateboarding. I think will not be on the Paris Olympics, um, and so and they will be on the whatever they are in Australia in 2028. So like there there's some changes that that you would think are also more permanent. Like the sport is a part of the Olympics, but like even that is, is not so. That's interesting. So, so I guess they do go through each committee. will be like, yep, this one is, this one isn't, this one is, this one isn't. And it's almost like just a brand new set every single time. Yeah. And I'm sure some are just sort of grandfathered in and they just go, well, that's definitely like the track right. and field will stay forever. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm <until>. sure. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. Interesting. It's got a legs. Yeah. All right. Well, no, Elsie, thank you for the update. Uh, were there any other questions on the parallel? Do you have a medal count for us, actually? Oh, that is a question I, I had. You know who has a medal count? Google. The oh, so I just want to say you, did a, you <laughs> crushed it with that coverage on that, though. The yeah. U.S. is number uh, number four right now. Uh, okay. on, oh, so un- unacceptable. China. It, so, yeah, it. It's really interesting because it's a it's a completely different um, you know dynamic, but uh, it's number four, and then there's there's a whole field. Uh, but the f- top four is China is number one by literally like almost double, actually double in the second team. So China is like not even close to anyone else. Um, then it's Great Britain, and then RPC, which I I don't think we should say who they really are because then if you actually name the it. words, then it's like defeating the purpose of i don't know some team with a white flag. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> i don't know who they are um and then the united states is what so um yeah a lot of events to go still uh we're i don't think we're even halfway through them um but okay but the u.s is lagging a little bit behind some of the other teams okay Very close. perfect lc like spencer said just going to echo that killed it right there that is your paralympic update not just overall but the DMV perspective as well. So thank you for that, LC. And now we're going to move on to the greatest return. Cristiano Ronaldo went back to Manchester United after 12 years, spent some time at Real Madrid, spent some time at Juventus. And now the prodigal son has returned to Manchester. I was hoping it would be to Manchester City to see the United fans just cry. Just cry so much as an Arsenal fan. That's what I needed this season. The city would have gone on fire. There would have been a civil war in Manchester. (laughs) And I was all for it. it. I just want chaos at this point. (laughs) Anything to take away from Arsenal's season right now. (laughs) God damn Tottenham's in first place. Arsenal's in last place. At least Ronaldo goes to City. Nope, (laughs) goes to Manchester United. So we're going to go around and give you our favorite return. Again, it could be to sports. It could be to a specific team. And we're going to begin with LC. He's on fire from talking about the Paralympics. Go ahead, LC. Floor is yours. Well, for me, it has to be, I mean, you know, I came in the States sort of more permanently in 2012. So like, some of the earlier returns that I think some of you may talk about, like maybe I wasn't yet involved in like the whole cultural, you know, context, but for me, it's the return of LBJ and it's not Lyndon B. Johnson. It's LeBron James uh, coming back to Cleveland after four years in Miami, after winning titles. Um, I was actually for this podcast, I was rereading the essay that he wrote for sports illustrated saying like, 
I don't, you know, I don't want some reporter saying this is this is why he left. I'm gonna write it, uh, which I mean, and, you know, obviously I'm, I'm sure that that there was a lot involved in that. But what a what an amazing way to come back and say I am going to come back to a team that's not a title contender. He even says it in the essay. We're not winning next year. Like it's not like I'm joining a team that's just gonna you know win next year, win maybe in two years. He said, but I'm coming back to lead. They they get to the finals. I know I didn't see you, but it's the East. Come on, like the East in like 2017, 16. It's like oh, it's not that hard. We tried really hard. The Wizards <laughs> yeah, tried really like, hard. Oh, you take that really. back. <laughs> he, so saying, uh, we, they weren't. They didn't have a caliber, caliber team, but it's a. Uh, are we going to trade a first round pick for Kevin Love in a prime? And then we have okay, Kyrie. But, just saying. <laughs> yeah, fair. But but he wasn't saying like, you know he wasn't joining a super team. Like you, I mean, yeah, I wouldn't call it a super team. He joined. Um, anyway, returning to not just the first team that drafted him. That's also what I like. It wasn't just like, oh, he came back to, oh, Kandine just left. Kandine just left the connection. I was, offended. I wasn't say, oh my God. Poor <laughs> that face. That, it was so a the, the, I think that this week's uh, uh, graphic needs to be just all the faces stacked <laughs> up. It's going to be this. so fun. <laughs> oh man. Oh, Provided right. by Xfinity. Um, but right. yeah, I, th- I think LeBron's the fact that he came back, not to just like, oh, the first team that drafted me, but like his actual home. Like to me, the fact that he came back to Ohio with his ties to the community and saying, you know, I'm here to win it for my city. That to me was amazing. And then to fucking do it against the best record, re- regular season record team in history, a stacked team um, of the Golden State Warriors, sorry, Spencer, with, uh, you know, Steph, Clay, hey, a uh, homegrown team Nadella. was not stacked. It was a homegrown. There's no Kevin Durant. That okay, was, but they're still it's stacked. stacked. Don't care. <laughs> Come on, man. The next can, season was stacked. If you if you homegrown great players and then you stack them together, you're still stacked. I don't Correct. give a shit. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> I don't care. Would you say from. Barcelona, for example, was not stacked <laughs> with Iniesta, Messi. Xavi, Messi because they were homegrown? Like, no, they're still stacked. <laughs> anyway, and speaking <laughs> of returns. They came back from a 3-1. Like, it's fucking True. insane. Was that the first time the, or, like, yeah. the fourth time that any NBA team did it? But the first time in the finals, I think, right? Yeah, um, I mean, so everyone me, thought it was over. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they, were selling the, they were selling the shirts. <laughs> they were selling the shirts of the, cha- the uh, uh, Warriors champions. So, to me, that I, I just have not seen a return like that. Just so much meaning to it. Um, so, much, so much promise and potential. And then to deliver that way, uh, just the whole package. I, I mean, that's it's really hard to argue against LeBron coming back. I remember hating him for going to Miami. I hated him in Cleveland because they kept knocking the Wizards out, even when he was like, I don't know, twelve years old. It was really annoying. Uh, we're gonna throw it over to K Dot right now. K Dot, you have twenty seven seconds before your net goes out. Spencer, be ready to go in case he goes out. Go ahead. I hate this. Um, I, I know that my answer was Michael Jordan, but I'm pivoting. Maybe it's a strategy for no hate debate. But uh, I think Jordan was the easy answer. And you, either one of the gentlemen that haven't gone yet, you'd be wise to take the choice. But um, outside of this, it's undisputed. It's indisputable. Muhammad Ali, greatest return back to sports in the history of sports. I mean, you're talking about a guy who, because of his convictions, almost went to jail because of what it is that he felt about not involving himself in the Vietnam War. He comes back and has arguably the greatest boxing career Ever. I mean, we're talking about the, the two Joe Frazier fights, uh, Ken Norton's fight. Like, he goes on to be probably still to this day the most influential sports figure in the history of the world. And I don't think that's hyperbolic in saying that. So, uh, Muhammad Sounds Ali. like another no, no hate debate. <laughs> I, I, you know, uh, Kadeen, I just want to jump in here. No disrespect to you and your choice, Muhammad Ali, but we got to go with Jordan. Okay, Let, think about this. Think about this. Jordan leaves as the greatest of all time and he leaves to go play baseball because, because his father because his father is killed. He defeats alien monsters, right? And then he comes back with the help of Bill Murray and he becomes the greatest of all time. I mean there is no question this man when, and actually was pretty good at baseball, not going to lie. You look at his stats, he's no Tim Tebow. He's a good, he's a good ball player. He's an okay ball player. Co- goes and defeats the Monstars and comes back and crushes it all with R. Kelly's soundtrack playing in the background. I mean, unbelievable. It was unbelievable. Just what a movie. 
What a story. So forget, forget the Bulls. Just beating the Monstars alone makes it the greatest return is the angle you're going for. Is that correct, With Spencer? Bill Murray. With Bill Murray. That yeah, movie Bill makes Murray, no so. sense. It's really <laughs> dumb. Space Jam 2 is just as dumb. It's really dumb. They're in the ground, yet they show up at the end in a spaceship. It makes no sense. <laughs> it's not it logic. In an alien word. It's loony. It's loony. <laughs> it makes no sense. Bugs Bunny comes up with the rule that they have to play the game. Come with the rule that you don't have to play the game. Like, what are you doing? It doesn't make it's, any sense. It's, it's bad a dumb fucking movie. <laughs> and not to mention, you can have Jordan. I gave you Jordan. Okay, I gave him to you. You gifted him. <laughs> I gifted Jordan. But, but Spencer, I don't. Were you gonna say the monster? He took it with a twist. Like, yeah, he took, monster, he took Jordan with a twist there. No, nah, because then you got to bring up R. Kelly. So on my side, I got Muhammad Ali. You rocking R. Kelly and the monster, I me. <laughs> no, no, no. They're the villains. They're the villains. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. The Ying some MJ's Yang, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but seriously, that second one, I can't bring myself to watch it. I just don't understand. This is a, here's another thing. Why did they cast actors as the family in both of them? Like, it just is weird. I thought that that was Jordan's son and Jordan's wife. And then it's like, that's not Jordan's son. That's not Jordan's wife. These are actors. Same thing with LeBron. You have like famous children, you have famous right. family. Why do you cast them? Uh, can anybody explain Because this can you name a cinematic masterpiece where they just had the actual family members? And Sophia Space Coppola. Jam yeah, wanted- Yeah, keeping up with the Kardashians. I mean- Space Jam, I don't believe that's a movie. Space Jam wanted to be Oscar worthy. And in order for that to happen, right. they needed that's to true. have- I didn't think about that. Actors, across the board you wanted an answer Which i believe Oscar? that's your answer <laughs> space <laughs> jam 2 is just as bad as space jam 1 anyone saying anything different no no no, no. space mind. jam 1 is better no it's not yes no it's yes. not it's not. i haven't even it's seen nostalgia. the second one and it it's is just better. nostalgia it's people getting nostalgia confused for what's good well but hold on because when i watched it as a kid which is like the target audience I freaking loved it. And so if you think about that way, right? Like, if, like, it's the movie doing its job, which is like making the audience feel like it's the best movie in the world. And that's the point. Is that it it's, it, it's for a six-year-old to sit down and watch the Space Jam 2, who doesn't really know who Michael Jordan is and they hear Skip Bailey scream about him. He is saying, this is an amazing movie. There's a lot of problems with it. The same way that we were dumb idiot kids and thought that it was great. It's not. Hold on, real quick. I'm a huge fan of this six-year-old not knowing who Michael Jordan is other than watching Undisputed on FS1 every single day. Yeah. <laughs> but I they knew who Bill Murray was. Kadeem's child. Yeah, that's, six-year-old. Been, that's, my, that's my six-year-old. <laughs> yeah, Kadeem's six-year-old is tuning in to Undisputed watching Skip and Shannon go at it every single day. No, but hold on, hold on. What does Shannon got to say? I just want to say really quick, Kadeem, you are absolutely wrong. They, the first one was ice breaking it was it was incredible right it was like the titanic it was but not sinking it 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 forged its own way space that's jam why we're 2, wearing black space jam 2 all they had to do was literally do the same thing and it would have been fine they could have just redone the movie and it would have been fine but no Bill, they had to bring in don Cheadle, who was Bill the best part i don't know, if you guys, I don't know, if you guys know this. don't 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 slot on don Cheadle like no, that don was the best part <laughs> don was the best part <laughs> No, no, don't brush it. Don't casually mention Don Cheadle. Like, that's a big reason. <laughs> it's still, hey, well, come on, man. Don't you slide off on Don Cheadle. He was fucking acting in that. Kugler came in, and everyone thought it was going to be good, and it wasn't. And people are disappointed because of that. Cheeto was fine. Man, the, 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 I, saw, I saw a clip of Clay and, and the brow like, as like weird fantasy characters. I just, why? What, what's going on? I don't want to even want to see it. Leave hey. it in the comments. Like and subscribe. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It's Space Jam 1. They're supposed to take the basketball ability from these players, right? Why can Charles Barkley forget how to walk? It makes no sense, okay? It was just a basketball ability. There's no, there's so many problems with that movie. They're not good. The they're scene, not for us, though. The scene that when he plays the, the young women on the court and then they're like, you're Charles Barkley. And they're, and they're like, you got to go. It's a beautiful. It's sad. It made me cry. It's a beautiful scene. Okay, so here, just a couple quick thoughts before I give you mine. One, let's just take a breath. How about that? Two, now that we've taken that breath, repetition works. If you look at Rush Hour and Rush Hour 2, they literally switched who said the joke. But not three. 
Not three. Well, because you couldn't switch it again, surely. So you're not a rush hour fan, up. honestly. Um, oh. I'm not. I'm oh, not. okay. Uh, okay. We got to know hate. Leave we the weapon. We gotta leave the know. weapon over we rush hour. No 48 hours people. over rush hour. There's so many. And not to mention, how many Asian jokes do I need to hear Chris Tucker yell? I'm over it. I'm just saying. Uh, you hear Jackie Chan yell the black jokes in the very next one. Listen, it wasn't that. I think. I think maybe you specifically weren't the target audience, uh, but you also didn't like Space Jam. So I don't really know what we're doing talking to you right now. I like now. good so cinema. I'm and gonna... guess what? Guess what? Guess what? My internet's working with these takes now, asshole. <laughs> so I guess somebody's agreeing with me. <laughs> Xfinity's like, no, keep it up a little bit. Right, He's I'm making done. good I'm points done. I'm, right done. Now. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Okay. So speaking of nostalgia, I'm going to go for mine because I figured Jordan was going to be taken. I figured LeBron was going to be taken. Muhammad Ali, I- I'm not going to dispute that. I'm not going to dispute that. So I chose the emotional angle. And uh, as an Arsenal fan, it has been a very emotionally vulnerable time for me. And so that reminded me of another time I was emotionally vulnerable with this team, which is every year. But one year in particular was 2012, like LC was talking about. We had just lost our center midfielder, Cesc Fabregas, the guy that made me an Arsenal fan. We had lost Samir Nasri. Robin Van Persie had to carry one of the worst rosters I've ever seen to the Champions League, meaning finishing top four in the Premier League. And who showed up to help but club legend Thierry Henry, who had spent so much time with Arsenal, arguably the greatest Arsenal player ever, right? He's with the New York Red Bulls. He's chilling. He's having a good time in the MLS. And in 2012, we got him back on a short-term loan deal. And initially, I'm thinking... I mean, who cares? Like, you know, it's nice. You're going to get some clicks on some articles. Like, it's a feel-good story. We're in the FA Cup. We're in the third round. We're playing Leeds United. It's 0-0. And Henri gets up and starts warming up. And people are like, okay, clap and stuff like that. Like, cool. He's not going to go in, though. He goes in. And within 10 minutes, has his trademark from the left side of the box, right foot, inside corner finishes i kid you not i became an arsenal fan the year after he left and i was crying because you could feel the emotion from i, I can't explain what i like oh, i just no, i with straight up could not explain what was going on for me but i just like i was celebrating and then all of a sudden i was just breaking down i was like i don't know what's going on but this is What's sort of the magic of sports was this club legend this uh idea bigger than a person hmm. came in and arguably changed the season for us. He ends up scoring the game winner against Sunderland in a Premier League game as well later on as his last game for the club and then goes back to New York. It felt like, I I don't know how else to describe it other than Jesus Christ came down (laughs) for a couple months, did what he needed to do, and then left us and absolved us of some of our sins. It was a few except, they, fun, except they didn't win. Unbelievable. We finished in third since, place, so. which was actually a place higher than Jesus would have brought you a championship. Nasri. If he had stayed for more than two months, he might have. If he had stayed for more than two months, he might have. Oh it was God. very, very difficult. Van Persie left immediately to Manchester I, United. I love that story. I, mean, I do encourage everyone to go back and just when he says, when Amit says he cried. Elsie and I burst out laughing. Kadina's like heart feltedly, like, yes, I understand. But it was and a very funny moment. I really liked it. I'm a great I'm, story. Though. I'm thinking about how I won this no hate debate because you two assholes are debating or Space Jam shit, Space Jam shit part 2.0. And he's over here crying on Thierry Henry. I think I won. <laughs> Oh, really quick, I was though, it's a no hate debate. I think I won. I brought no nothing hate. but love to that debate. Yeah, love. Love and uh, just the emotion. I love. Of- I love Ronaldo returning, by the way. I think it's so cool. I know Amit, you want to watch the world burn, but I think it's so cool. If he wins one. Oh, no. Go- goat? Are you reintroducing this? Goat? Is oh, goat? shit. What? I tell you what. Uh, so, no. Once the, once the dust settled, I did think it was pretty cool. I, I mean, he is 36 years old, but he works. and I, He's still going to be productive. So, I, I think for those that are like, oh, why? He's 36, citing the age. You don't know what you're talking about. I'm just going to tell you straight up. You have no idea what you're talking about. He is going to be productive for Manchester United. I think it was a great move for them. They got a huge emotional lift. The same thing I'm talking about with Thierry Henry. They got a huge emotional lift. And this guy staying there for at least one season, one full season. When they play Liverpool, when they play Manchester City, when they play at this point Tottenham, 
and Chelsea, you are going to see a very different Manchester United, not the one you've seen in recent years where they somehow fold. He won't let them. It's going to be very must-watch TV, entertainment, soap opera, reality TV, whatever you want to call it, you're going to want to watch that because he is big time. And I love the move from Manchester United's perspective. Hate it from the watching the world burn perspective because all is well in Manchester. Very annoying. And he'll be their top Calvin Klein model on the team. Oh, that's very attractive. I'm really used to returns because in Argentina, good players are sold to Europe. Like as soon as they reach top potential, they're like, fuck it, make as much money as we can. Um, And then once they're like 36, they come back fat and slow. And they're like, I returned to to the home team. It's like, great. It's like I never left, baby. (laughs) Yeah. So we're, we're used to them. <laughs> didn't didn't uh, Tevez return? Oh, yeah. Carlitos came back twice. He came back, got fed up, went to China, was like, the fuck am I doing here? Came back again. And then it was just like, all right, I guess it's time to leave now. Like, it must have been emotional good. when he returned. <laughs> oh, my God. Every time. That's what yeah. I'm saying. It doesn't matter. He I mean, got to go to China, like, do whatever. Diego came back after his, like, you know. Of course, every, every good enough Argentinian player to go play in Europe eventually comes back in their 30s. It, it just happens. I, there's actually like there's actually like debates about will Messi come back to Newell's Old Boys, which was the like youth team he played in in Rosario, because like he could like, he could be 37 and be like you know I'll play a year for my. He could probably be team. like 45. Well, you know, his like main talent is speed. You know, like speed with the ball and like agility. So like. It's not like a keeper, you know, like, I don't know, 45, how fast he's going to be. But whatever. He can play whenever and people would love to bring him. Like, that's right. out of the question. Some free kicks, some through balls, some ticket sales. Yeah. You'll be there. there. You <laughs> yeah. It oh, yeah. will be there. Anyway, that's going to conclude this week's State of the Union DC Sports Wraparound. Cover- Whoa, no, I'm sorry. We are beginning the State of the Union. That's concluding the no hate debate. Um, and the State of the Union is a very, very quick one, beginning with the Washington Nationals. We suck. Kybert Ruiz made his debut. He was part of the L.A. Dodgers trade, so nice to have him. But we suck. We'll see you in 2023. Then we have the Washington Spirit. They tied 0-0 to North Carolina Courage. They are now in sixth place in the NWSL, very last playoff spot, eight games to go. This Saturday, they play at the Portland Thorns, 10.30 p.m. on Paramount+. Plus. See what happens there. D.C. United, big 3-1 win over the Philadelphia Union. Boca Juniors man Ramon Avila scored the game. ceiling goal. <laughs> what a man. Love that guy. Also goes by Junior because his dad is also Ramon Avila. And so D.C. United do not have any more games until September 11th. It's an international break. They are in seventh place in the Eastern Conference. And finally, the Mystics' Elena Deladon has finally returned. And just as she returns, Tina Charles, the current frontrunner for MVP, gets hurt. So we still need to see them together for more than one game. The Mystics are currently in ninth place right now. Top eight make it. So still some time to go over there. And that's your very short State of the Union DC Sports Wraparound coverage segment. Talked about the Washington football team. This is District Divided. I am Amit Singh. Spencer Brudig's the guy that brought you in today. That's KDOT with the shitty internet. And that is LC Lautaro Cabrera with the Paralympic Update. Thank you all for listening so much. And we will see you again next Wednesday, 3 p.m. Take it Space easy. Space Jam is for kids. Space Jam is amazing. It's amazing. <laughs>